Hi right, guys, welcome back to another video. I have had some requests to make some more videos on Tuner Pro, so here we are. End of the video, I will have a PowerPoint to summarize the video. I am not a professional tuner, I am someone who took the time to research and test the changes that I am showing today. There could be different ways to tune these BMWs, and everyone has their preference for how they do it. Do this at your own risk, research, read, and look up things on forums, you could easily mess up your engine when making changes to the tune. This is only a video showing the changes I make to tune my own BMW. It's my car, if I mess it up it's on me. Do these changes at your own risk. I am not liable for damages that occur to your car. I will post a link where you can download Tuner Pro. Go to tunerpro.net. Go downloads Tuner Pro applications. And then you can download the free version. The paid for version really doesn't have any more benefits than the free version. Also go to N54 public XDF repository. Click here the code button and then hit download zip. Once that's done downloading, extract it to a file, probably save it on your desktop. You will need to use MHD to log and also upload your tune onto your car. For those of you who have never used Tuner Pro, this is essentially the main screen. The parameter tree is where you have all your different uh, tables that you can adjust. You want it to be on parameter category, that way you can have these organized nicely. If this ever uh, goes away, view, and you hit show parameter tree. So when using Tuner Pro, there are two different types of files that you need to use. XDF file is essentially all of the different tables that you can change. And then your actual bin file are all the changes inside those tables. So like if you have your uh, fuel, the actual XDF is what has this table in there and then all of these numbers that are here are saved on your bin. So you're actually uploading onto the car a bin file, but when you're making changes to it, you're making changes using a certain XDF. Once you have the XDF on Tuner Pro, you don't need to change it, you don't need to do anything with it, but imagine that the XDF is like the blueprint, and then the bin is all the data in the blueprint. So the first thing you're going to do to start is select your XDF. This is on the saved zip file that you extracted and saved it onto a folder on your desktop. And then you can see it's XDF file. You select that one. Since we're using the newest XDF file, I will also grab a stock bin from the downloaded zip drive. So you can open bin. This is on that uh, zip drive, go to N54. Using MHC, you can see if your computer is like an IJ EOS or the I8 AOS. And then you can open that map switch bin. And that's the base bin for your car. Once you do this, you need to save the bin, save as, and you can change the name to new tune or something that you will remember it. You always want to save it as a new tune though, so you can always go back to old tunes. The next thing you want to do is set up your uh, compare bins. So you hit load compare bins and you can add your base tune to this. That way you can kind of always compare back and forth. So then you want to go through and take off all the limiters on these tunes and there are quite a few. Boost ceiling is the first one. Stock, it'll come 1.28. Change that to 1.5. Map max voltage is the next one. That'll come stock 4.47. Change that to 4.8. Go down to limits, go to torque limiting maps. Requested torque limit driver. 737.6, what you want to add there, came stock looking like this. This is another one you want to change. 
it looked like this before. It's the other one you want to change. It was all these numbers before. You want to put 1482 all across and then come down to load limit factor. And it should be 0 0.130. This is what it looked like stock. Boost limit multiplier. This is another one that you want this to be 2.9 on all of them. You can go through and edit all of them like that. Or you come down here. You can hit fill value with and you can hit 2.9. Select them all and that'll add it there. Make sure when you make any changes to any of these maps, you have to hit the save button at the end. Next you want to go to toggles, diagnostics code 2FA3, missing code, set that to zero. It was 11, meaning it was on, so set that off. Then you want your under boost code. Turn this to off. It was at 22, meaning that's on. If you hover over some of these, it'll say to, to disable, set to 00, zero to enable, set to 22. Be a little different for each one. Make sure you save it when you're done. All right, now that all your limiters are taken out of the way, and that can go for basically any modification that you have done to your N54 engine. Now we need to look at how you can increase your boost and how we can make your car faster. So we're kind of going to be bouncing around a little bit depending on what you have done. So let's say you have some 17T turbos and if you're running E85 or E54, there's a couple different changes you need to make. Or if you're running the 3.5 bar T map, there's also changes you need to make. So I will go over all those different changes. That way you can tune your car properly. First area we'll start is the load per gear. This is under load and then load per gear. From the stock tune, it looks like this. I change it, everything to 182, and that gets this actual load target out of the way. It's very important. You need to go to MHD configure. That's another uh, your MHD suite. Active map slots. You'll have one. Enable custom boost ceiling. You want to make sure you turn that on. That's going to be your boost per gear and per RPM. Number one in there is on, then save it. Go to custom base table, say map one, go to boost ceiling per gear. What this does is makes it so you can actually target a certain boost in each gear. My car is a manual. I believe it's the same for automatic. You have to add in these numbers. So there's already one through six for your one through six gears. These top columns are your RPMs. So you go to boost control breakpoint. That's how you can change your RPMs and add those in here. So now my table has RPMs, it's got the gears, and then this is the amount of boost that I'm requesting. So like for instance, first gear at 1750, I'm only requesting three pounds of boost, and then six pounds and 10 pounds. So first gear, I only request 10 pounds. And 15 pounds, and then I up it to 20 PSI. This is what's going to be what you're actually requesting for boost. This is in your map number one. I'm only going over map one so far. So since we've already got the load target out of the way, we've got the amount of boost per gear set up. You can now go over to boost control, wastegate duty cycle, and you want to go to breakpoints. So let's go to wastegate duty cycle adder, and you want to change these breakpoints here, and I'll explain why. I raise my adder pretty high. So you can see here's my breakpoints, 210, 240, 280, 320, 380, 420. Save that. And then go to wastegate duty cycle base. And don't go to Y, go to X. And you want to change these breakpoints also. Really the important ones that you're changing are these last ones. So you can just look here and see what changes I made. So then you can look at your wastegate duty base table. This is your base table to how much your turbos are actually uh, requesting the boost or how much wastegate duty cycle requested to close. These numbers up here is the actual MAF or requested MAF. That's essentially the amount of airflow that's getting pumped into your car. When you're at high boost, high RPM, you're going to be way past 333 requested MAF. So that's why 
we change these numbers to give you more control up higher. So far I've left this table the same except for extending out these numbers here. Next you can go to Adder Airflow. I extended these numbers out here and I also increased them. This is going to be adding on top of your base numbers. If you have 17 T's or 19 T's you could add number 5. And you could save that and start with that. Then you want to go here to ceiling. I also extended math requested numbers out a little farther. You can see they only went to 333. And then I changed all mine to 15. This is how much the PID system can add on top of your base requested duty cycle. This is your uh, AFR table. This is your load. And then this is your actual RPM. On that Excel sheet that is in the repository, that gives you a couple different uh, AFR tables that can be used with different types of fueling. This is the stock one, probably with 93 octane fuel it's expecting you to use. Mine I have it targeting 12.5 AFR at a higher RPM, higher load. So look at that Excel sheet, you can see what uh, how you want to target your fuel. Too lean, you'll burn up your pistons, your motor will run hot, and you'll have timing retard because of pre-detonation too rich and you're putting too much gas in your motor and you're probably going to dry out your low pressure fuel pump or your high pressure fuel pump quicker. So you need to find that perfect balance. The next table is your fuel scaler. This is essentially your short term fuel trims. It comes blank on this map so you need to go through and add your RPMs and then add your actual load. I'm running E54 so my numbers are quite high. But if you're running, let's say 91, you can fill this whole table with 1.1. This is the actual table that you need to log to make sure that your short-term fuel trims are not pulling fuel or adding too much fuel. If you're running E54, you can make this whole entire table, let's say 1.4. If you're running E85, you probably wanna make the whole entire table maybe 1.6 and then you will adjust as needed once you do some logs. If you have E85 or if you're running E54, your car is going to have a rough idle when you first start it up. So you want to take this fuel start table and you can multiply the whole entire table by let's say 1.35. So select here, multiply, 1.35 and that'll get you raising this whole entire table that's just giving you more fluid at startup under ignition timing main that's the next table you can mess with be very careful on this table it is really hard to tell when you are making more power or you're just making the engine a higher risk of pre-detonation or bad things happening I left this table stock for right now while I'm doing some tuning and messing with my boost and getting this table kind of finalized. This timing table essentially starts about a thousand RPMs and then it'll work its way around this way and then that way you're only requesting like nine degrees timing advance at a high RPM or at red line. Look on that Excel sheet and it'll give you different timing tables. Just be careful adjusting your timing tables. And those are all the changes that I made to do my first tune. That way I can start logging and see what other changes I need to make. So go for a drive in your car. Make sure your temperature is at least above 160. Make sure you're logging. And I'll go over all the parameters you need to be logging. Also, if you have the stock map sensor, you'll only be able to request, request about 20 pounds of boost. If you have the 2.5 bar map sensor, the N20, you go over here to MHD. Go to N23 scale or 3 cell scaling and you can apply the patch and that will automatically put the newest conversion of the map sensor in this tune. So go ahead and do that if you have the N20 map sensor. If you have a different one then you can look online and find the actual conversion for that. If you have the stock one just leave this be. Under MHD there are uh, different channels here that you want to make sure you're logging. Make sure you're logging boost. 
boost set point, boost target. I have cool it on there. All your cylinder timing corrections. I have six off so I can have more room. Low pressure fuel sensor, your gear, intake air temperatures, lambda, bank one and two. Load actual and load requested are very important. They're all important. MAF requested wastegate duty cycle. Oil temp, rail pressure, RPM, speed, short term fuel trim, one and two. Throttle position, timing, cylinder one. Wastegate duty cycle after PID, wastegate duty cycle bank one, and wastegate duty cycle base. Those are the important ones you need to be logging. Once you're ready to test out the file, you can go to the actual folder, take the bin, click and drag it onto your actual, whether it be your cell phone or your tablet. That way you can go in your car and upload it to your car. Then once you're in your car, you can pull up MHD, grab your custom map. You can go through, see if there's any other settings you need to add. If you have a different T-map sensor, you can select it here and write map. Then you can go for a drive and do some logs. This first drive, I want you to take it really easy. You want to go, you know, minimal boost, minimal throttle, less than 50% throttle, and you want to look at the log after it. Make sure nothing crazy is happening. No super timing pulls. Your AFR isn't uh, crazy. So let's uh, let's do some small logs first. Next video, I will go over what changes to make when you're not getting the requested amount of boost and what to change in your tables. And I'll also go over how to check your short-term fuel trims and get your fuel scalers tuned correctly.